Hello, everyone. This is Rick with the Cyber Pro Podcast. It is truly to share their insights. It's about nine minutes because hackers never sleep. Let's get to it. First question, who are you and what do you do? Christian Espinoza. I own and run Blue Goat Cyber. We focus on medical device cybersecurity. So Christian, talk to me a little bit about what emerging technologies or trends or approaches that you're excited about in cybersecurity. Well, one of the things I'm excited about is what we work on. It's kind of the intersection of physical systems and cyber systems with medical devices, such as the surgical robot. So there's a lot of advances in technology, uh, and we're getting to the point where right now surgical robots, for instance, are assisted with a with a surgeon in the future they're going to be autonomous so so you can go have an operation with robot does it all by itself so the risk is extremely high with this area of cybersecurity because if somebody hacks into the surgical robot they could kill you so i'm very passionate about making sure these advances in technology and my company helps make sure these advances in technology remain secure so our healthcare can continue to advance versus be rolled back because of these massive attacks against things like in vitro diagnostic systems or surgical robots or implantables. So why, you know, we talk about medical devices and I mean, they've been around for a while, right? We're getting very automated, but you know, it, it was as simple as the IV pump back in the day, right? And now those are oh, all yeah. connected devices. You know, what, what changes have we seen as we've moved towards artificial intelligence, as we've moved towards advanced robotics that has really caught your, your cybersecurity eye? Well, I, I think uh, some of the changes are AI, obviously. Uh, I know with with medical devices, there's things called software as a medical device that are, a lot of them are AI enabled now that are used to enhance traditional imaging to diagnose like deep vein thrombosis or other you know, vein diseases or other artery diseases or anything in your body. So there's a lot of adding the AI component to it uh, and then figuring out how to make sure that that's protected uh, as well because... Physicians are making treatment decisions based on the output of these technologies. So it's important that we make sure the output is accurate. And that's the biggest fear with medical devices, for instance, is somebody altering the output. So the physician makes a uh, treatment recommendation that is inaccurate that might cause harm to the patient. So that that's one of the biggest things that I live in Phoenix right now, the Phoenix area. I talked about cyber physical systems. Uh, here in Phoenix, we have autonomous driving cars. Uh, the, the brand is Waymo. I take them all the time. I personally think they're safer than Uber or, or Lyft, but I have to wonder you know, about the scenario. What if somebody hacks through this car and speeds it up to 120 and runs into a light pole and I'm in the car, right? That, that go, of course, goes through my mind quite often as well. <laughs> no, that's amazing. And you know, I think I think the big thing we're talking about here, right, is is kind of the cybersecurity around IoT. You know, these these aren't your typical operating systems. These aren't your laptop that you're handing out to your employees. So so what is some key differences when we're looking at securing these type of solutions? I think that the, they're pretty much the same from a, a, a lens we look through to secure them. We look at what holes are available, uh, which ways into the into the system. Uh, but primarily, it's configuration and patching. I mean, those are the two things that we often neglect to do with a laptop or enterprise environment. But if you have an IoT device, uh, just because it's your TV or your refrigerator or your thermostat, it still has software on it that needs to be updated. And typically, there's a browser interface, so you still have to update that software. And then you still have to make sure it's configured properly, which is one of the biggest challenges. People just assume uh, it's an IoT device. It doesn't really matter. It's my television, right? But they don't go in and lock it down or remove restrictions from it. I mean, add restrictions. They leave it pretty open for anybody. And the problem with that is that device can be leveraged if, if compromised for someone to attack other devices or to make it join a botnet and then attack another organization later on. So I, I think those two things uh, are standard across all of cybersecurity, but they're often ignored. The configuration, a secure configuration, and the patching and the updating. You know, those, those things are... I think if we did those things and multi-factor authentication, we'd have way less attacks that are successful. So let's look at something a little bit more general. You know, when you, and obviously you're in the medical field, you know, you work on the devices, you, you obviously work with a lot of healthcare providers, but 
even as a whole, what do you feel is a critical aspect of a robust cyber strategy that most organizations can accept? I think having a, well, number one, having the strategy, <laughs> that's, typically, <laughs> that's typically lacking. So having a strategy that aligns with your business maturity, your organizational growth projections, and your risk, your risk appetite. I think in cybersecurity, we try to have this one size fits all approach. We're going to have this, this framework that every company, regardless of the size, regardless of the budget, regardless of, regardless of the resources needs to apply like this 100 point checklist. And that is, that's never effective. If it was effective, we wouldn't have so many compromises. I think it's much more important to do like four things very well on a prioritized list of things to do for cybersecurity. Do the four things based on risk. So we reduce your risk very well. And don't worry about the other things until you get more resources and get more mature. And I think that's the approach we need to be taking versus, you know, buy a new uh, next gen firewall, do this, do that. If you got multi factor authentication, conf secure, secure configuration, patching your applications and your operating systems, um, maybe knowing where your data is, your critical data, and seg segmenting that, if you do those, just those basic things, you would be much further along than most people, in my opinion. I love it. Well, I'm excited. We have a bunch of cool bonus shorts that are going to be popping around here. <laughs> but before we get to those, we have the final fun question for you. What's your favorite piece of retro technology that just makes you smile? <laughs> My favorite piece of retro technology. Um, I don't know if I really have a favorite piece of re retro technology. I have, uh, I would say I like older music, <laughs> not, not so much technology, but I don't have a I still have a CD player in my, my vehicle, so maybe that's my uh, favorite piece. But I still play CDs sometimes. I mean, most of the time you can't get that. I miss my CD player. That is definitely retro. <laughs> it is definitely retro. <laughs> yeah. I have to like shine the, uh, you know, the scratches off the CD sometimes so they don't skip as well. That's right. That's right. Well, Christian, thank you so much for being on the Cyber Pro Podcast. Yeah. Thank you for having me on, Rick. I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning into the Cyber Pro Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on new podcasts and all of our cool bonus content.